Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So today we're going to talk about some of the advanced tools of shaitan and understanding the role of magic in the toolkit of shaitan. So in addition to these uh, regular tools that we talked about last time, and we said that there are roughly 25 of these, the Satan has some other advanced tools, which are not the regular ones. These advanced tools he can only use with the permission of Allah, and without Allah's permission, these advanced tools will not work. Why does he need these advanced tools? And we talked about that, that some of the people are much more resilient against the regular tools. And these people, like people of the highest degree of Iman, uh, Prophets, Siddiqeen, Shahada, they are attacked by Shadan with these advanced tools, along with the regular tools that the Shadan has, the Satan has. And there are about eight of them. But one of these tools is magic, especially the black magic. That is one of these advanced tools. That's why it will never be activated without the permission of Allah. It is a combination of some drawings, some whispering, some blowing. That's why Allah said that it refers directly to the black magic. But all of these acts, uh, it couldn't be activated without the permission of Allah. Uh, that's why Allah said uh, in the Quran, but they do not harm anyone through it except by the permission of Allah. So from that we know that this black magic, it not only becomes effective with the permission of Allah, uh, and it has this dynamic of cause and effect to it. So it is like cause and effect. The cause is present, that is, the magic, or let, let's give an example of the cause is present of weather being cold outside. But if until unless you go out in the cause, uh, in the cold weather without a jacket, you will not get a cold. So similarly, the effect will come from the cause. So that is why it will keep continuing because it is one of the tools of the shaitan. So this cause of magic is always there. But the effect can only happen if there is permission of Allah. Which he has used on certain occasions and on certain people. But it needs a direct permission. So shaitan, the Satan cannot just use it regularly as a regular tool of the Satan. It works only with the permission of Allah. And... Let's talk about one more thing. It becomes part of the nature. Let's take the example of rain and cloud. A cloud is the cause, but it will not rain till Allah wants it to rain. Rain is the effect. If there are clouds, it doesn't mean that there will be rain as well. Rain needs the permission of Allah for the clouds to change to rain. Without this permission, we can have months of cloudy skies, but we will not see a drop of rain because there is no permission from God for it to rain. Like sickness and death, the same example. One finds people who are sick for a long time with many kinds of sickness. That is the cause. But the effect, which is death, needs the permission of Allah. Otherwise, one can live with disease for a very long period of time and do not die. But people die when the permission of death comes from Allah. That's when the effect comes. That's when the effect happens. So by understanding that we, by that understanding, we can consider magic as part of cause and effect. Meaning magic is the cause. It exists in nature. But the impact of magic happens only when Allah permits. And that's why it's really important to protect ourselves with the askar, with the zikr, with the teachings that has been given to us because those teachings protect us from this cause to translate into effect. We're going to continue this dialogue in the next part because that it becomes really interesting in the next dialogue when we talk about what does it mean in terms of protection. Thank you. Talk to you.